What's going on everybody? Today we are in the desert of uh, Arizona outside of Tucson and I have to replace the rotor the rear rotor on uh, our dually here our uh, 05 Dodge Ram 3500 um, with the 5.9 Cummins in it <clears throat> and you're not gonna believe this shit you've got to see this rotor um like brakes were fine when we left Texas. Uh, I didn't hear anything towing all the way over here from Texas. And once I get the rotor off, you're gonna see. So stay tuned for that. But let's walk over here to the bed of the truck and I'll show you all the, the assort, uh, assortment of tools and crap that I got. Let's get it. All right. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so um, you're gonna need some sockets. Uh, I got my breaker bar. I got my uh, pry bar. Uh, Got my half inch uh, uh, impact there, um, ratcheting wrench, and I have a grinder over there. You'll see what I'm gonna use that for later. WD-40, brake cleaner. You know, if you're like me, you get your old lady's old uh, dish towels and bathroom towels. Um, you're gonna need a new uh, hub seal. You're gonna need a new uh, axle seal, and obviously a new rotor. Best way I've found to get this thing off is with a pick. All right, so we got the tires off over there. Um, we're jacked up. This is one of those moments where you do as I say and not as I do. You need to have a jack stand under this or um, you know, something under the axle other than just your damn jack. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of faith in that old Harbor Freight junker there um, and I'm kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So you kind of just got to do what you got to do. <clears throat> so looking at the rotor here just at a glance, it looks kind of normal, doesn't it? Well, I did a brake job uh, a couple weeks ago, and this is why, or about a week ago, and this is why I know shit's messed up. So whoever owned the truck before me and did the last brake job, they didn't, uh, they took and they ground these off. And these right here is a tab to tell you whenever your brakes are getting low so you don't go metal on metal contact. These were gone. <clears throat> so in between the drive from Texas to Arizona where we are now, um, I didn't really hear it with, uh, you know, I didn't hear anything wrong, but there was a lot wrong and you'll see why here in a second <clears throat> look at how thin that back side of this uh rotor is that is nuts and this is marred up hard as hell i'll show it to you obviously once i get it out but it is nuts so this is a needed absolutely detrimental job need to get done caliper bolts are 13 millimeter um on my truck who knows what somebody put back in yours? I don't know. Um, so I use always use a, this C channel here to compress my brake pads. I don't have a fancy brake pad compressor. That's my fancy brake pad compressor or brake caliper compressor. Sorry. Anyway, so um, I went on the top once and then on the bottom once. After I got the top bolt out and like leaned it back a little bit, I was able to get in there and smash it down. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna take the C channel off there. That uh, brake caliper will pop right off, and we're going to zip tie it somewhere, and I will be right back. All right, so my little method, as you can see, it got it compressed pretty good. And what I will end up doing is um, I'll take a brake pad, and I'm going to take it and uh, flip it around to the metal side, probably. Or even the brake side, doesn't matter either way. And uh, put that on there with my uh, clamp again and get it down the rest of that little bit of a way. <clears throat> So anyways, we're going to pull off these brake pads and get this uh, this piece off here. All right. Having a brain fart. Can't remember what it's called right now. If you know, tell me in the comments down below. Thanks. All right. Um, <clears throat> I just got to preference this. I had to go buy this set from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's an impact set. I had to get it because I didn't have any six points with me. The reasoning be because uh, once you get the rotor off to take the hub assembly off, Sometimes it's those E-bit um, nut heads or bolt heads, sorry. And I've seen some in videos where it's actually six point, um, just regular nut heads. But anyway, a six point will fit on the E-type bolt head. Um, and that's why I had to go get these. Cause I mean, I've got 12 points. I got a shitload of 12 points. But um, anyways, this was only like 17 or $18. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm just letting you know. I got, um, so far I've only used this set to take off my caliper <clears throat> and then the bracket, the bracket is a, uh, 21 and that was in the set as well as you can see it hanging off the backside there. 
Now I'm going to take my old trusty uh, um, snap-on uh, breaker bar ratchet, 3 8 inch, whatever. My mom probably doesn't watch these, but thanks, Mom, for the ratchet. Anyway, let me get those off. I'll be back. Okay, so um, this is a metric set. And all the other uh, sockets fit perfectly so far. So, um, did I use this one? What is that one? Oh, no. Oh, what? I think this might actually be a 14. It's just that whoever did this job... No. Anyway. <clears throat> so, I used the 15 to break these loose. If you can see, it's kind of loose. I did it real gently. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing it like I did. Uh, go get a different socket. I probably will when I go to tighten this back on, though. So um, I already got all these broke loose. So I'm going to buzz these off. You're going to want to have something and a something down here to catch the oil. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of oil come out of this thing. Um, like I said, I got the bracket off. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, got to get something to catch this oil. Um, and then I'm going to get my hammer and knock this loose. And I'll be back. Found it. It's a 9 16 So I used the 15 and it's got a little play. It worked, but do as I say, don't do as I do. Nine sixteenths. Okay, rubber mallet, ratcheting wrench, nine sixteenths, oil catch can. Let's get these out and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so yours may be like mine and not even need the hammer, as you can see. And there's that oil I was talking about. I dropped a bunch of dirt down in there from the from this the dirty ass hub here, so it's not stuff in the oil. Um, all right, looks to be slowing down, and I got a rag here to uh, to catch a little bit of it. So what you're going to want to do is, uh, as you pull this out, you're going to have a rag or something to clean the shaft as you're pulling it out, because obviously you don't want all the damn dust in the world on that thing, because this goes to your differential, you know, and you don't want a bunch of dirt in your differential. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and yank this out and I'll be right back. All right. So what you're going to do first is you're going to get you a little flathead or something. You need to get this little ring off right here. This ring helps prevent this key way from slipping out for some weird reason. It shouldn't, but that's what it's for. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a screwdriver, we're going to pop that off, and this is uh, got a little bit of a load on it. So we're going to want to try to get a magnet or something, tap it one way or the other to get the load off of it, and then pull that keyway out, and then clockwise or counterclockwise we get this out, and I'll be back. All right, so I took this straight pick right here. I got these at Harbor Freight as well. I think it was like $6 or something like that, and it came in like a set of like eight or nine picks. Big ones and small ones. This one came in there too. You'll see what we're going to use this for here in a second. But I used this one to tap on it with a hammer like that to make it go clockwise to get the load off of that little keyway. And I can't find my damn magnet. I hate that shit. When you got something, you can't find it. So I went and got my needle nose pliers to get that out. Save this. Very important. Let me put it right here. I'm kind of scared just having it sitting at the end of my needle nose there. Anyway, do not lose this. Do not lose this. Okay. So now what we can do is we can take and screw this joker off right there. And uh, let me put this somewhere safe and I'll be right back. All right. So it, mine was still a little tight. So I had to get the straight pick and take it counterclockwise at an angle and hammer it a little um, with my rubber mallet. You don't want to use a real hammer. I guess you could use a real hammer. It's not contact on contact. Anyway, um, so I've got this pick, and we are going to unscrew it. As you can see. So we're not going to take this all the way off, though. We're going to get it right about there, and then we're going to grab a hold of this thing and pop it towards the uh the front here because if you take this all the way off and then you pop it you're going to have a high likelihood of your bearing that's right behind this 
hitting the ground and then you're gonna cuss him because you ain't gotta clean the damn thing. <clears throat> Actually, I think I can probably just do this one-handed. It was so easy, look. All right, now we got it at uh, that. We're gonna take, take this off the rest of the way. And then we're gonna try to get that bearing out without it hitting the ground. What I might actually do is put a towel down there just anyway, just in case, because sometimes I screw shit up. All right, let's get that and I'll be back. All right, so um, with one hand, I had it right here and I slowly pulled on it with the other hand right here, catching it, um, no issues, fell right in my hand. Uh, bearing looks good, y'all. So we don't have any issues there. Um, you're going to take in a break clean, clean the hell out of this, as well as the other one and the inside of the hub and all that stuff. But we're not there yet. So we're going to take, put this in a safe spot. And um, then we got to yank that joker right there off. So <clears throat> uh, when yanking that off, you're just going to want to either grab it both hands under there or on the backside, whatever you're most comfortable with. It's kind of like an awkward shape and it's heavy. So and then you're just going to yank that joker off there. And uh, once I get that done, I'll be right back. All right, so I used my long-ass pry bar here. It's probably overkill like a mug, but uh, you could probably just as easily use a flathead screwdriver. And uh, I just took and stuck it behind there, and it's inching off of there. We're going to get that off of there and get the brake clean and the wire brush, and we're going to get this thing cleaned up. Then we're going to bag it and tag it, and then we're headed to the rotor. Be right back. You like apples? Well, how about them apples? They're not those crazy uh, heads. They're just regular bolts on this 05. Um, all right, so we're good. <clears throat> Did I show y'all this earlier? Look at how bad this backside was, man. So thin. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna get a socket on that. Let's figure out what size that thing is. It is a 15. We win, ladies and gentlemen. Impact extension. Impact. And I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna buzz all these off real quick. I'll be right back. So, <clears throat> I'm obviously not sponsored by anything. I'm just out here trying to show y'all how to get shit done, even in the worst circumstances. Um, but man, oh man, is your life so much damn easier with power tools. Sheesh. Anyway, um, just buzzed those out. That took me all of like 60 seconds. So, we're going to pull these apart here in a second and uh, get to cleaning that thing up. Yeah, give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, so this bearing looks decent too. Um, we're gonna be packing both of the bearings with grease before they go back in. Um, but yeah, so that is your area down there that you're gonna wanna clean thoroughly uh, with brake clean, rags, and whatnot. This is the pieces of the seal. Um, so you have to have a seal. If you don't have a seal, you need to stop this video right now. Hopefully you're watching this before you do the job and go get that damn seal because it is going to come all apart whenever you take this apart. Anyways, I'm gonna clean this uh, clean this up. And uh, after that, I think we're gonna pack the bearings and uh, I'll be right back to show you that. All right, so I used my brake clean, some uh, towels and some uh, like these, like uh, we call it lint-free rags or whatever. Um, cleaned out the inside of it. Let's see if I can get you a better look. See how it's all shiny? It was on this portion and the portion down there in the bottom. That's where your bearings actually sit. So you want that to be smooth. You don't want any dust under it or anything. All right, we're going to take the rotor. We're going to sit it down on there and uh, we're going to start get that on there so we can clean the bearings the same way with brake clean. And then we're going to pack the bearings. Going to put the rear bearing in and then we're gonna put the hub seal in, but uh, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get this on and I'll be here at the next step. All right, now this is pretty straightforward. Um, obviously spray it. And then uh, dry it off. I'm running low already. I thought I had two cans, but I only had one can. So I'm trying to be as sparing as possible while getting as clean as possible. All right, so I can't do this one-handed, so I'm gonna get you get off the camera here, um, dry this all up, let it air dry good, um, start working on the other one, and then we can uh, pack it with grease. I have uh, some uh, premium wheel bearing red grease. There you go. Just happened to have that from like a dirt cheap from like two years ago. Anyway, all right, uh, I'll be back. Okay. 
got the bearing packed. So um, grab gloves and uh, let's get this bearing and I'll kind of give you an idea how I did it. All right, rest that on my knee. All right, see here? So I had the gloves on and I was holding it like this and like I took grease and I smashed it down in there, both sides, on the sides, got it nice and lubed up, okay? They sell expensive bearing packers. You got two of them right here, okay? All right, so we got that in there. We're gonna get the seal in, it's over there. Let me get that and uh, see if I can't start pushing the thing in. All right, so here is the hub seal. Um, so there is a difference between the single rear wheel and the dual rear wheel, okay? It is, uh, this one's much thicker. Um, and, uh, believe it or not, I think it was actually $3 cheaper. And anyway, uh, so there is a tool that you can buy to, uh, install this seal, or you could just, hold on, you gotta get it started. I may have put the rotor on here too soon. Uh, let me put this down and see if I can get it in there. If not, I might take this rotor off. All right. So, uh, yeah, you don't need the tool. Just, uh. I literally just got it started on both sides and then put my weight on it and it snapped right into place. So yeah, there, that's done. Okay, so now we're gonna be slapping this thing on uh, on the truck. And then I need to pack the other bearing and uh, throw that in there. And uh, well, when we get to that, I'll show you. All right, so I just grabbed it both sides, left hand, right hand. Gently got it on, slided, uh, guided, I gently guided it on there. And once I got to the back where the, uh, the seal hits the uh, axle, I made sure that it was on that lip, okay? And then I pushed it and it made it go back just a little bit, right? And I was like, okay, well, how the hell am I going to get it to go back and seat the whole way? So, a little uh, ingenuity, I grabbed right here. And right here, left hand, right hand, sitting on my little stool here, scooted forward, put my feet on the rotor, grabbed the leaf spring, pushed it straight back. Bingo, bango. It's good enough for the chicks that I hang out with. It's good enough for me. All right, so we're gonna pack that other bearing because um, it goes in here, and then we gotta get that nut on. But I'm gonna put this plastic bag back over this while I pack that bearing, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we got the other bearing packed. And it's down in there. We pushed it in with our fingers. And now we're going to be, we cleaned this off with brake clean and we're going to be screwing it on. Let me see if I can get it started. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So here is what you got to do here because this thing, there's a special tool for that. Um, they're probably a whole lot cheaper. You can get them on like Amazon and stuff like that. Now, these days, back in the day, they were super expensive and they're really hard to find. Uh, you don't need all that shit. Obviously, you saw me using a giant pick earlier. That's the same thing we're going to do now. I'm just trying to tighten this down as far as I can while I'm talking to you. And then what I'm going to do is spin the rotor and then tighten it some more. And we're going to keep doing that to preload those bearings. And uh, I'll be back. So again, this is a do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, I would suggest buying the tool and then putting a torque wrench on it and giving it 22 foot pounds because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Um, but me, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. So I kept spinning this um, and I used actually this pick to, every time I would spin it, I would grab the hole right here, pull it down a little bit, okay. And once I got to the part to where I couldn't pull it down anymore, I took my flat one, or my pointy one, rather, um, and my rubber mallet and stuck it on there, hammered it down there a little bit, because this keyway was a little bit back here, put it past it, it's nice and tight, still spins, and now we're going to back it, the keyway up so the keyway will fit in there, and then we will put that uh, the keyway retainer on there and throw the axle shaft back in and put this shit back together and then we will be done y'all so um uh, let me get to that and i'll be back all right once you got it you're gonna want to slide it in if it's a little tight you might want to spit on it first so you go ahead and slide that joker in right there and then we will take our little ring and i believe it goes just like that back 
on there. And look at that. Back together. Now we got to get our gasket. Get your gasket here. This is, uh, I don't know, I got it from Amazon. I think it's Felpro. But, uh, no, it's Dorman, actually. Anyway, um, part number, just in case you want it. I'm going to stick uh, this gasket on the axle shaft and then slide the axle shaft in. All right, I found it best for me to uh, pull this out just a little bit to line up the gasket, get a couple of them started on both sides, and then what I'll do is I'll take and uh, the blue Loctite on the end of these. Looks like these had yellow Loctite at one point or something. Is that, doesn't that look yellow to y'all? Um, and uh, tighten all those down, and then I'll pull the last two back out, put the Loctite on those, and shove those in there. Maybe it's just old habits, maybe it's just me, but uh, I tightened these in a crisscross pattern all the way across just as if it was lug nuts. All right, now that we got that on there tighter than a duck's butt, <clears throat> like I said, uh, we got to get the caliper bracket. But uh, I think what I'm going to do first is get my wire brush and uh, uh, brush it because uh, it's got a little bit of junk on it, a little bit of dust and stuff. And, you know, I don't want that. You know, it's just good common practice to clean shit up before you put shit back together. So I'm going to do that, and uh, we'll get that on there, and I'll be back. All right, so when I had changed the brake pads a week ago or whatever, and, like, I noticed the back side of that rotor was jacked up, look, you can see that there's a little bit of some grooves in this. And this is where that grinder comes in handy because we are going to try to grind these grooves out because I don't want these this to potentially wear grooves into the brand-new rotor. <laughs> um, I already used my... Uh, my C clamp to compress the brake caliper as you can see they're down flush um, I cleaned up the caliper bracket and I stick it I stuck it back on there it's already on there tight um, I just got to get the the metal retainers there for the brake pads but first I'm gonna get my grinder and I'm gonna try to grind this smooth first and uh, I'll be right back I'm gonna try to keep you out of the wind but see how it already started it's like starting to flatten out right there um obviously you want to wear um a mask while you do this you don't want to breathe this shit in all right so as you can see it's not perfect but i don't want to sit here and wear this thing down all the way right um i guess you could take like a piece of sandpaper or something or you could just not be a cheap ass and go buy another set of brake pads um i don't know i don't even know that it would damage the rotor i'm not a mechanic i just do shit <laughs> do you know that you're an adult that you could just go and do shit <laughs> anyway um this is good enough for the dogs that i play poker with so uh it's good enough for me so i'm gonna put the metal uh retainers on there and i'm gonna stick these brake pads on i'm gonna stick the caliper back on and uh, tighten that up and i will be back once that is done all right so let's see it's uh 10 38 i've never done this job before um i just did it i started i think i want to say i started right around 8 a.m um and i was having to take the time to film so um i think you could probably get each side done in two hours easily I so i could conclude so that can conclude all right so that concludes today's little uh adventure um don't forget to go over your abcs when you're done and uh see you next time peace